morning, crypto. Good morning, warriors. Hello and welcome back to another episode of your favorite crypto news channel, Good Morning Crypto, where we bring you the most relevant and impactful crypto-related topics from the top crypto research team in the world. I'm your host, Abs, joined by several members of our 3T family this morning. We got Mr. Johnny Crypto, Mario, the node defender and the CEO of Collecti Lab, Selman G, is in the building, so very excited for this episode. Today on Good Morning Crypto, we will be discussing how Brad Garlinghouse continues to gain confidence in his battle against the SEC. Claiming a ripple win will have massive implications for the entire market. Mercedes-Benz is the latest global brand to utilize the blockchain as Polygon is accelerating the adoption and utility of crypto assets, stating that 2022 is the year of production for Matic. Coinbase continues to deal with insider trading allegations, and Flare Network is hosting a 4.6 million token airdrop, adding excitement to the much-anticipated network launch. Big short investor Michael Burry doubts the SEC has the resources or the IQ to investigate crypto, while Cardolonia is bringing a metaverse to Cardano. After a successful presale, we show our listeners what's in the works. Vitalik Buterin is proud of the Ethereum Foundation sold at the top of the market, and we show our listeners a video of SEC Chair Gary Gensler stating that the Ethereum was an IPO or an ICO during its initial launch. Our show is available on your favorite podcast platforms like Spotify and Apple Music. And for those of you listening via podcast, our show is live on YouTube Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern at the 3T Warrior Academy channel. So for anybody who didn't understand what I said at the end there, we are going to show you a video of Gary Gensler stating that Ethereum is a security and it's from 2018. But before we do that, we're going to kick to Johnny Crypto this morning. Johnny Crypto, I am getting on a flight later this afternoon to come and see you this weekend, my friend. So very excited. How are you feeling today? Oh, I'm feeling just as excited. I can't wait to have you guys all here. It's going to be great. Looking forward to that. And uh, the weather's great too. And I'm looking forward to chatting today on all these new topics. Uh, good morning to all the warrior maniacs out there today. Unfortunately, Dan, no, we can't have XRP Jenna on every single day. <laughs> we would, but nonetheless, we're happy to, uh, love to, happy to see my brothers here. We got Mario, we got Selman. Good morning to you guys and hope you guys are doing well. We got the Node Defender in the building this morning. Mario, thank you for making time for us, my friend. We got so much great stuff planned for our listeners, as you know, but what's on your mind this morning? Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Yeah, well, I love being here. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody around the world. It's super exciting to be here. I will not be hopping on a plane later on today to go and see Johnny Crypto, but I should be hopping in a car to go and see Johnny Crypto. So it's going to be an amazing weekend. We're all going to get together and have some fun, do some boating and catch some sun and hopefully get a little bit of a sunburn. What I'm hoping for is that I'm going to be as tan as Johnny Crypto after this weekend, but we're going to kick it to Selman. Selman, you showed our listeners something very interesting yesterday with the update you had on Collecti Labs. Congratulations on that amazing news. And anybody who's looking to catch more of that information, they can check out the non-fungible show, which is on every Wednesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern. But Selman, what's on your mind this morning? I know you got some great technical analysis, my friend. Thank you for making time for us. Thank you so much. And good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. I see the lovely comments again. I'm super happy to be here again. And yeah, the topics are insane and we got, you know, crazy news updates and so happy to cover all of that uh, with you guys together. And of course, we sold our first batch uh, of, you know, gen tokens yesterday. It was so much fun. And thank you all for joining the non-fungible show. It was so much fun. And all the warriors out there, get ready. We will be in the metaverse very, very soon. So thank you. Amazing. You heard it first here on Good Morning Crypto. We got 138 live listeners out there. We're going to say it early today. Show us some love. Smash that like button before we dive into all this amazing content. We're going to get started the same way we always do by showing you guys our Good Morning Crypto Twitter account at 3TGM Crypto on Twitter. You get access to every single one of us. Typically, we go live on Thursday at 8 p.m., but we will be traveling today. So going to keep you updated on that. The Bitcoin fear and greed index is climbing this morning, Johnny Crypto. We are in moderate fear still, sitting at a 32, so we'll skip right on past that and get into some exciting to exciting news on the total coin market cap. So we are sitting back above $1 trillion this morning at $1.06 trillion in total market cap. Bitcoin is 42% dominance. Ethereum is around 19%. Yesterday was a pretty exciting day for crypto holders all across the board. We had Bitcoin getting back above 23000 sitting at $23,200 this morning. Ethereum is above $1,600. XRP, $0.35. Cents. Cardano is $0.50. Cents. Avalanche is $23. Chainlink is almost $7. 
We've got Stellar at 11 cents, Algorand at 32 cents, Hedera Hashgraph at 7 cents, and Quant is $96. We are constantly covering Quant on this channel. The more and more successful it is during this bear market, the more excited I am. But Johnny Crypto, I'm going to kick it to you, my friend. What's on your mind this morning and how are you feeling about some of this bullish price action, even though it's very, very small? Yeah, you know, I'm not excited about it yet. I'll get I'll get excited when I start to see some big monster green candles. That's what I really want to see. Right now, we're just seeing Bitcoin and everything just kind of playing around with us, you know, breaking a little trend line, then going below the trend line, just kind of messing with us. No real true, <clears throat> you know, push in one way or the other direction wise. So I'm not super excited about that. But I do I do think we will get, you know, a bit of a bullish trend from now to, to September, I think. And, you know, as people come back from vacation, you're going to see maybe some more money flood in. And I think we'll get a little push probably maybe towards the end of August, my guess. So, you know, for now, there's things like Matic that excite me, you know, Algo, HBARC. I count my eyes on all those. My favorites, of course, are the metaverse plays like Mana, Central Land. So, and of course, I love Quant, but, you know, <laughs> we got to wait for that to pull back a bit. 100%. Somebody's like, you can't cover Quant every day. And I said, yes, I can, my friend, because we get to choose what we cover on this channel. But Mario, I want to kick it to you next. Everybody was talking about the news we got from the Federal Reserve. And it seems to me that every time Jerome Powell speaks, we're getting some bullish price action in the market. What are you watching this morning? And how did you feel about the inflation news from yesterday? Yeah, I think it wasn't it wasn't surprising to see what the, the inflation news we got yesterday. I think the reason why the market reacted the way it did is because people were paying very close attention to what he was saying. And uh, I think had he said that we were in a recession, that probably would have caused the panic. And we know that these markets are, are highly, highly emotional. So people were already expecting the 75 basis points. It was no news. It was already baked into the price. Um, so nothing new there. But had he come out and say we're in a recession, that most likely would have caused the panic. Emotion out of people would have caused people to sell. But we know that we are in a recession. I'm not going to go into too much right now. We're going to discuss that into the episode. So I'll, I'll leave my comments for further into the episode. For sure. We got some great clips planned for our listeners. And one of our loyal listeners commented, we find out today if we're technically in a recession. Of course, we see that we already are. I couldn't agree more. So that may give away the clip we're about to play. But Selman, I know you got some technical analysis prepared. So I'm going to kick it to you, my friend. And what's also on your mind this morning? Yes, sir. So guys, to be honest, it's it's weird. Literally yesterday, Jerome Powell talked about how like technically we are in a recession. and Everything's going down the hill. But all of a sudden, the markets pump, and uh, it, it feels weird. Was the news basically priced? Um, let's find it out um, on the chant, like on the charts. It's really funny, to be honest. Like here, we have a dollar index sitting on support. If we lose that dollar index here, if we uh, lose that trend, that moving trend, uh, we could really see a little relief in the markets again. So it's just fighting. Like literally, when we see bottom and we pump back up expect a pullback for cryptocurrencies and stocks but currently you know it's just indecisive we'll find out soon this one's interesting like this is the treasury yield 10-year treasury yield and it formed a head and shoulders didn't check this one for a while now uh, but today it got my attention we broke that trend and it looks like if we lose that support we could go lower meaning people are actually afraid of high risk reward you know, assets, which is, for example, stocks or crypto, they rather invest in bonds. So uh, if we lose that, probably we could see more, uh, more volatility in the markets and more pullback. So because of the recession update today that we're going to talk about, uh, we've seen that, you know, crazy sell off again. Uh, just, yeah, we'll see very soon. But on the higher time frame, you guys will see what I mean. Literally, we talked about that for months. Whenever we hit that falling trend, um, we basically um, have seen a bearish move. We've seen a pullback in the markets. So this is one thing. And another thing would be Dow Jones, for example. Here, Dow Jones, guys, is currently forming a bullish move, which is weird. So you see right after that update, we've seen that bullish move here in the markets. And it looks like we could continue a little bit further. But keep in mind, we this is going to be a little little uh, pump in my opinion i believe we're still gonna see another bearish move uh within a couple months uh because some people were discussing that in the comments smp is doing great today so that will reflect on bitcoin and it surely does right now but again guys we're still 
sitting below that trend. It's at resistance. We need to break above that level, and it's really trying hard. If we do so, check this out. If we can break above 23,200, if we can see a daily closing here, uh, I know we're getting close to the weekend. However, if we can really manage that, we would also close above that micro uh, falling trend, right? And then continue rising all the way up to 26 to 28,000, which is a big resistance zone based on on-chain metrics and technicals. So 26K will be essential. XRP really, really trying hard to hold that falling, like that uh, support here above the falling trend. So which is 35 cents. If you guys see, and it looks like we're going to see a little bit more bullishness as long as, you know, all the markets, including Bitcoin is bullish. We could really see another uh, pump all the way up to, you know, 38 to 40 cents. But 37 cents will also be an important one. So for me, 35 cents is essential to really keep the bullish move forward. But 37 cents will be essential to see more um, growth here because we have um, and we, we have a big falling trend here. Let me get rid of the technicals here because I really want to show you this little move here. So let me show you this um, right here. Yeah. So you see the falling, the rising trend here. This is the moving trend on the weekly, guys. We're still sitting below. We need to close above 37 cents this week to see more upside potential. And then we would hit 40 to 44 cents. So I'm really looking forward to that short term. Tether, of course, Tether dominance is losing. Um, dominance, basically, this is great. It's getting weaker. And as long as this is bearish, this is great for uh, the crypto market and the altcoins. And of course, Ethereum. Ethereum is currently looking bullish. It looks like we're going to continue uh, the bullish trend. However, don't forget, let's go to the higher time frames and see. We have a big resistance between 1700 and 1844. That zone will be a big resistance. If we can break above that, then of course, getting in uh, little by little, like little, literally buying small portions makes sense. And it, don't forget, we have a mother trend. The bear market here continues as long as we don't break above uh, 2,500 right now. That falling trend is going to be essential. But if we break above, the bull market continues most likely for Ethereum. But for now, get ready. If we hit that level, taking some pro uh, profits here at 25 would be great. But this is, you know, we're, we can discuss that in August. For now, we really need to focus on this resistance, horizontal resistance, which is key. And last but not least, of course, let me show you Matic. Matic had a great run. But back here, I said take profits. It went down to 72 cents. However, it made it back up because we have great news updates that apps is going to uh, pull up. And guys, right now at resistance, volume is decreasing. So because of the news updates, it's pumping. But if Bitcoin can't make it and Bitcoin is, you know, if we can not make it and we go down, expect volatility for Matic. But if Bitcoin consolidates, money flows back into all coins. Matic is one of the coins because of the news updates um, that is going to pump to one dollar. If we break above a dollar, great, great um, upside potential. Because one dollar is a big resistance based on you know the horizontal here, based on technicals and price volume. So one dollar is the key level. If we break it, perfect. But don't forget, this is the mother trend. This is the mother trend of the bear market. If we can really break above what is it now? Above 91 cents on the daily, there is a high chance we can really go up to a dollar and with a retest confirming. Uh, the support resistance flip, we might see more bullishness, but it all is connected to Bitcoin and of course the markets. So that's pretty much the quick update for today. And don't forget to join the weekly live sessions. Uh, we do Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on you know the, the Zoom calls basically with Jackie and Gonzo. You're all invited, of course, all the members of the Academy. We're doing all these updates pretty much um, 
daily. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Selman. I love your technical analysis and all the value that you provide for our listeners. One of the things that catches my attention is there are two projects that seem to be moving during this bear market. That would be Quant and Matic. And I want to kick it back to you before we dive into our article, Selman. What does that indicate to you that some of these altcoins are actually moving while 99% of this market has regressed over 80%? Yeah, so it's it's actually um, probably because we already news the price, uh, the we priced the news, and uh, lately, you know, we've seen so much selling pressure, and the market was oversold that uh, most of these altcoins really because of these news updates and because of their you know basically market market cap, small market cap, they they have seen a great run so far, and um, I kind of feel like right now people don't really pay attention anymore what the government says because they already we already knew for months now that we're in a recession and um right now when they're just confirming it it feels like it's over like we we uh, they admitted that we're in a recession but it feels like we're going to recover that's what people believe in and so i personally believe it's going to be of short nature that we see that pump uh, but um nevertheless guys make use of that pump take profits and um, eventually, you know, get out when you see another pullback. Um, the more we pull back these days, the closer we are to the bottom because, you know, basically we have these four year cycles and it looks like in the next coming uh, months, uh, when we see a bigger pullback again, that's going to be an area where I'm definitely going to pay more attention because it might be the last, the last pump. Thank you so much, Selman. And we're going to dive into our first article for today, but we got 196 live listeners out there. Show us some love. Smash that like button. This whole team is going to be in Connecticut with Johnny Crypto this weekend. So if you're looking to find any one of us, look up Johnny Crypto's property. No, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. We're going to dive into our first tweet for today, which is breaking news. US GDP has declined by 0.9% in quarter two. That is the second negative quarter for United States GDP. And we had White House Press, press Secretary denying the claims that the White House is redefining a recession following two negative quarters. So we're going to let this clip play. Then we're going to get some comments from the group, starting with Johnny Crypto. Here we go. If things are going so great, though, then why is it the White House officials are trying to redefine recession? No, we're not redefining recession. If we all understand a recession to be two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth in a row, and then you have White House officials come up here to say, no, 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 that's not what a recession is. It's something else. How is that not redefining recession? Because that's not the definition. That is not the definition. Brian Peace said in 2008, of course, economists have a technical definition, which is of a recession, which is two consecutive quarters of negative growth. I can tell and you this. He said two, two negative quarters of GDP growth is not the technical definition of a recession. It is what not. Changed? It is not. Why did he say that? It was? is not. I can I can speak to I can speak to you to what he said yesterday in front of all of you, which is the last thing that you just repeated. There are many factors. There are many factors, economic factors and indicators to consider. I'm just going to cut it off here because basically what she does is she bounces around and dances around the question. Johnny Crypto, I have some thoughts when I watch something like this, but the semantics are what come to mind. The classic game of misdirection, the fact that they're arguing about something. It's beside the point. We are negative GDP. Whether we define it as a recession or not, I'm not really sure why that matters, but I'm going to kick it to you, Johnny Crypto. What are some of your thoughts? Well, I'm so excited because we have the newest member of our Lion Rat Snake Weasel Club. We could add her on the list because she's pretty much trying to spin that shit. Here's the bottom line, folks. Two negative. You, you, can't, you can't say this is the definition one time and then change it another time. The whole world is using that definition. And so at this point, either come out and say what the new definition is and be honest about it. Don't try to be a lying rat snake weasel. And whoever that reporter was, kudos to him. I love how he was keeping her feet right up <laughs> on the fire. Good for him. And, uh, yeah, we got our newest member. And, yes, folks, we are in a recession. Don't let them fool you. Mario, I want to go to you next because what catches my attention is why are they debating about the definition when it's undeniable that we've had two negative quarters of GDP? That's what I mean when I feel like these debates are a distraction. It's a it's a it's a debate around the real issue. How do we get the GDP back profitable? And what are some of the things that are on your mind as we go through this turbulent time? Well, watching that video, one thing that stood out to me was how uncomfortable she was, body language. She was so uncomfortable being up on that stage. She was like moving, you know, flipping the pages out of whatever she's she has in front of her. And she was so uncomfortable to be asked that question and to have to lie because 
she knows that what he's asking is correct, but she has to lie and say, no, that's not true. And that's not the definition. And the government can change the definition of anything that they feel like. But we know that recession is coming the same way that they said inflation was not coming and inflation came and we're dealing with it. Recession is going to come. We're going to have to deal with it. This is a time for you to be aware of what's happening around you. Be aware of the economic uncertainties that are happening. There's opportunity always. There's always opportunity. If this is a recession, well, guess what? There's going to be opportunity in this recession, whether that be picking up crypto assets at an extremely discounted price or picking up a property because, you know, the housing market is whatever it is, there's going to be opportunity. So this is a time for you to be aware uh, and take advantage of that opportunity. You're spot on. We got some amazing comments going on in the live chat, but I don't want to address that. I want to kick it to Selman G real quick. Selman, what do you think about the United States being in a recession? I know you're not an American citizen. And when we talk about cryptocurrency, we always remind our listeners that it's a global market way bigger than the United States. But what does this indicate to you, the fact that the press secretary is claiming we're not in a recession when technically the definition tells us we are? Yeah, we we are in a recession. And uh, it's not just the U.S. In Europe, you also have the same thing. They don't want to admit it, but we are all in a recession. And the main reason for that, guys, is... Um, so many people are uneducated. They don't know really what's going on in the financial system, right? And so if we hit a recession now, they will blame, the, in this case, the Biden administration, even though people like people that know how like the system runs, we knew, but even back in 2019, we knew that this is going to happen because it, it's just the numbers. We know it's going to happen, but especially when you print money with, almost zero uh, interest rates. Of course, at some point that's going to accumulate. And at some point we will hit it. The bubble will burst and we, we, uh, we will hit a recession. If it was, you know, Trump now um, reigning, I would say literally it would be the same. It, it would, in, in this case, a lot of people now believe all oh, the Biden administration failed. Of course they can uh, control it a little bit, but we know where the direction is going to. And um, that is why, you know, they try to redefine it, say, no, we we, uh, we weren't, you know, we are not the victims here. In Germany, it's the same. And this is all because a lot of people don't really know how the system runs. And they, they would, of course, blame the current administration. So um, all I can say is, guys, I totally agree with Mario. This is the time we shouldn't just sit there and cry. This is an opportunity. See every day as an opportunity. And the markets are going to bleed hopefully more i really want it to bleed more because let's buy more right this is so essential i really want this recession to continue for the next two years so i can really develop different business strategies to make more money so i can invest in assets but of course some people want it to go up immediately so don't become greedy when the things pump right now have a game plan please work on that game plan and trust me guys if you have that strategy ready you're going to kill it Johnny Crypto, one of our listeners commented and said, that was the press secretary. I thought it was SNL. So did I, my friend. But we got 240 live listeners out there. Show us some love and smash that like button. Johnny Crypto, I'm sure you got some closing comments. Why don't you bring us home here? And then we're going to dive into our next article, which states that the SEC may not have the IQ to regulate crypto. Yeah, you might be right. Well, first of all, I'm very happy that we have our newest member of the Lion Rat Snake Weasel Club. So we'll add her to the list. Um, I think summons to something very important at the end. As we have this little pump coming up here that we think will happen in the next month or two, guys, make sure you have an exit strategy in place. And, you know, I love engaging with with our listeners here. And Crystal had a great question here. She asked when Merlin was going live. She says, I'm over switching back and forth on all my different exchanges. Yes, I hear you. I feel you. We are planning on going live this fall. However, as you all know, you can go right there. Thank you, Mario, at Get Merlin Crypto. Go sign up for the 30-day free notification. So when that comes out, you can sign up. You'll get a free 30-day trial. Try it out. So pretty soon you will you, – you, Chris, I'm happy to tell you that soon you won't have to switch back and forth anymore. You'll see all your coins in one place. Your exit strategy will be there. You'll get your alerts, and you won't get wrecked when the next crash comes. Johnny Crypto, don't forget about the most exciting part, which is that all the influencers who have signed up to work with Merlin, you're going to be able to see their, their exit strategy and execute at the exact same price targets. But we're going to dive into our first article for today, which is a big short article talking about the 2008 recession. Big short investor Michael Burry doubts the SEC has resources or the IQ to investigate crypto listings. 
on Coinbase correctly. So we all saw the news from the SEC claiming that they that Coinbase was selling unregistered securities this week. At the same time, they were busted for insider trading. And Michael Burry commented on that here. So Michael Burry said that the first investor, he was the first investor to oversee the U.S. subprime mortgage crisis that occurred back in 2007. He's talking about the Coinbase facing an SEC probe on crypto listings. He said, I'm pretty sure the SEC does not have the resources or the IQ points to do this correctly. The SEC previously named nine crypto tokens that they believe to be securities. But here's what's really interesting. Down here, we had a comment that said, I'm happy to say it and I'll say it again. We are confident in our rigorous, rigorous diligence process, a process approved by the SEC, keeping securities off of our platform. We look forward to engaging with the SEC on that matter. That is a statement from the CEO of Coinbase there. So Coinbase isn't shying away from many of these allegations. And I do think this is a battle that could come to the forefront after the Ripple XRP lawsuit, a battle between Coinbase and the SEC could take center stage. I'd love to start with the node defender before we kick it to Johnny Crypto. What's on your mind, Mario? What does this article indicate to you? And how do you feel that Coinbase, well, they're preparing to work with the SEC and they're encouraging it? Yeah. Um, I mean, the coin, I think Coinbase being a public traded company, uh, I think that they they know what they're doing and I think they will, they will be okay as far as that's concerned. I really think this is a time for all crypto to come together and, and to fight this battle together against the SEC, which in my opinion would be to create regulation around what cryptocurrency is supposed to be and, and not securities, right? Because security laws apply to things that, to, to uh, securities that, that, that are really old and crypto is a new technology and that needs new regulation. So I think this is a time that the Coinbase needs to come, come together and probably, and possibly fight it together with Ripple. I would be really cool to see, to see that, that come to the forefront. You know what would be interesting? We had one of our guests, Tony Edwards, tweet out the other day. He wouldn't be surprised if exchanges started to pool their resources in a battle against the SEC. But Johnny, we got a funny comment. The Rat Snake Weasel Index is pointing to extreme greed this morning. What does this article say to you, my friend? Oh my God, I love we. <laughs> That's right. I forgot about the index we created. Yep, the, we definitely have a bunch over here. I will say this about Michael Berry though: that guy is not a Rat Snake Weasel. That guy is a smart guy. I love super smart people. And I know some of you guys out there don't like Michael Saylor, you know, but guys like that, these guys are super smart. They they, they spend tons of hours researching and knowing the markets they play in. And if you look at that comment, actually, Mario, can you put that comment back up? He says right there, and I think that's so important. I can't see it. Yeah, there it is. Pretty sure the SEC does not have the resources or the IQ points to do this correctly because, you know, Michael or not my uh, Michael Burry, he actually saw the subprime mortgage issues happening before anybody in the world. In fact, he did. He made, he made some really big, short, bold moves that weren't even possible because certain things weren't in play. That's how confident he was from what he saw. So when this guy is telling you he's seeing it here that they don't have the IQ points, he's he's right. We all understand because we spend all our lives and all our time researching crypto. We know how complex it is. There ain't no goddamn way in hell the SEC is spending as much time as we are understanding and researching cryptocurrencies to understand how they work, what constitutes, you know, a security or versus a blockchain functionality. They're, they're not paying attention to none of that stuff. They're not going that deep and trying to understand that. So I think Michael's right. I don't think the SEC is equipped to do this. I think they tried to when they said, oh, we're going to put Gary in here. Gary knows this stuff. Well, we saw Gary. He might know it, but he ain't doing what's right by the people or what's right by this industry. Selman, I'd love to stick on the Michael Burry stuff, but the Coinbase comments really caught my attention. Not only is their process of approving cryptos approved by the SEC, it shows me that the SEC is, is playing on both sides of the coin. They're telling Coinbase that they're allowed to not only be traded on the New York Stock Exchange, but sell many of these assets that they consider securities. And then they're going to be prosecuted in retrospect. So I'd love to hear some of your thoughts there and the fact that the SEC is not shying away, or sorry, Coinbase is not shying away from the SEC. They're encouraging this battle because they think they're correct. And it's just um how can I say it? I'm 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 certain that um all these exchanges, especially Coinbase, they're doing a great job right now. Uh that they wanna um actually um work on making this place also better, right? But here's the deal. I also wanted to touch on what Johnny Crypto said and um completely agree with you, Johnny. It is so important that um, you know, like 
imagine the SEC needs to hire so many people first, like all these developers first uh, of the blockchain space and Web3 space, and then sit down with them and really talk. They need to learn this first. They need to understand how this technology works. And then they come up with a plan. This is going to take two years. We know like how corporations work. And now Coinbase also stepping in. And um, I mean, of course, SEC blaming them uh, uh, for for selling securities and now that coinbase is also trying to you know protect people um i believe like this is a like a huge war is coming in my opinion but i feel like this is going to be a great thing once the sec really um i hope uh you know gives up at some point we i believe that something great is going to happen in this market uh, but um i personally you know don't don't believe that it's going to happen very anytime soon. This is going to take a long, long time, guys. So get ready. Johnny Crypto, we always talk about a black swan event and people tend to focus on stable coins. But what I'm seeing on the horizon is that the SEC is going to be attacking multiple exchanges. And if one of these is found to be insolvent, like a Coinbase and delisted from the New York Stock Exchange, that could have massive implications, not only on the crypto markets, but on how investors look at cryptocurrency for the next couple of years. What are some of your thoughts? And why don't you just close this out here? Yeah, if, if they do that, then that means their whole plan is to kill the industry because that's exactly what it's going to do. If you take down Coinbase right now, which is the only public, publicly traded company that people understand and know, you're going to destroy. Uh, it's like one of those things when you, you know, when you when you put a bad message out there or you accuse somebody of something and then they're proven that, you know, they didn't do it. But it doesn't matter. You just always think they did because the, the news was out there. That's what's going to happen with cryptocurrency. If they take down something like that, already people are skeptical of crypto. If you then take down the one uh, exchange that people thought was the the the, the right way to you know trade in it because it's publicly traded, it's just going to yeah, it's going to really set. In my opinion, it's really going to set crypto back big time. It might be very very hard to recover from that. Um, it would take multiple years. Um, Congress and other types of regulations and big companies reinvesting, new companies cracking, all the things that may be bigger companies. It would take a long time to recover for something like that. Yes, and I can only imagine the long-term implications that would have. We got 249 live listeners out there. Show us some love. Smash that like button. We've got an amazing article prepared talking about how Tether is being accused of having 85% Chinese reserves. And we're going to show you guys a video of Gary Gensler talking about how Ethereum is a security, and I think that's what we're going to dive into next. So I'm going to show you a video of Gary Gensler from 2018 addressing digital assets in general, and he even goes as far to say as Ethereum, well, that's a security in his book. We'll let the clip play and get some comments from the group. Here we go. Lubin raises a very good point. The reason that I have come to a view that they should be registered uh, with the Securities and Exchange Commission is one of their four offerings, one of the four securities, that they do Ethereum, I believe the strong, there's a strong case, a strong legal case. It was a security. It was an investment contract in 2014 when it was offered, similar to all other initial coin offerings. They were careful, they were clever, but they still, I think, were a duck and waddles and quacks like a duck and they passed the Howie test. I want to pause it there because we covered a clip from the Winklevoss twins yesterday and they said the exact same analogy. And this clip was from 2018. In 2018, Gary Gensler was saying, if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it is a duck. The Winklevoss twins were saying that and applying that same exact analogy to the cryptocurrency market today. But Johnny Crypto, let's stick with Ethereum here. Gary Gensler said he thinks Ethereum applies as a security and he believes all ICOs actually do. What does that say to you? And what do you think has changed from now in 2022 until 2018, what made him change his stance? <laughs> Probably a boatload of money somewhere that you and I will never know about. But, uh, you know, Gary, you know, here's the problem with anything our politicians say or, or people in control. They're not held to any standard. So the hypocrisy is off the charts. He could say that two years ago and now he'll just come out today and say, oh, well, now I learned something new or something different. And now Ethereum is not. And that's the end of it. That's it. Nothing else happens. That just becomes the new rule. And, and they get to skate away free. And that's probably, you know, obviously we're seeing that's what's happening because you don't see the SEC suing Ethereum. I haven't seen any news about Ethereum being sued by the SEC. Is anybody else? So the reality is they're going to, you know, he's going to skate free. Now, the interesting thing is if I, if, I were, if I were the judges, 
I, or, or if I were a Ripple, I'd bring that kind of stuff into court as well if they could. Because, again, you just have so many people saying Ethereum is a security. And if Ethereum is a security, then, then XRP is. But if Ethereum is not a security, then XRP is not a security. So which way is it? It's going to be very interesting to see which way it goes. Selman, I'd love to go to you next because somebody said, one of our loyal listeners, Mentelec, said Gensler's going to go after Ethereum later. One of the reasons I believe that he may not go after Ethereum is because they have so many ties to the Ethereum alliance. They directly profit off of Ethereum being successful. But what are some of your thoughts on this clip here? And do you think Ethereum is a security? Um, I don't want to actually talk about if it's a security or not. But all I can say is there are super, like, I personally really believe that banks are really deep into Ethereum. They are invested and they have a big interest, of course. And um, even Gary Gansler, Gansler months ago and you know stated that Ethereum is you know a currency and um, and not a security. So I'm like, it's not going to happen. Probably they're not going to sue it. But uh, you see how like this the system runs here, right? So. That is why, unfortunately, Ripple is the the victim here in this case. Um, but we're gonna come out better, and we're gonna take over, hopefully. But nope, I I, I believe Ethereum is is um, isn't gonna be attacked. Like he's definitely gonna find a way to say, oh yeah, that was like in the past, but uh, we really dived into it and did many analysis and how how we test again. No, it's not. Maybe maybe that's gonna be his his. Um, his thought or his comment on this and you know everybody's gonna just move on mario i think yeah, the biggest like problem here is outdated legislation of course all icos are registered as securities because how else are you supposed to distribute these tokens without doing an ico but what are some of your thoughts on what gary gensler had to say there and how do you think he's going to continue to regulate this market forward do you think he's going to go after ethereum at some point yeah i 100 agree with you abs the, the problem here is a lack of regulation and here's the problem with that conversation of whether ethereum is a security and and the XRP is a security. I totally understand that Ripple can and will use that to defend themselves in court. And I think it's only right that they do it because if there's similarities in, similarities in the way that exper uh, XRP was sold in comparison to how Ethereum was sold, then they definitely should should mention that in court and use it in their favor. The problem is if we're going to sit here or, you know, I'm, I'm using we as a metaphor and root for Ethereum to be a security, then that's the wrong thing to do, in my opinion, because we are basically deeming a lot of the crypto space a security. And we don't want that because we understand that cryptocurrency is a different thing to a security. Cryptocurrency is a new technology that needs to be looked at as a new technology. And a lot of the world, you know, first world countries have acknowledged XRP and Ethereum and the list goes on for what they are, cryptocurrency. And they, they're, they're creating regulation to... Um, to help the, the industry, to help the blockchain continue to, to be in an innovative space. So if we're going to sit here and root for Ethereum to be a security, I think that's that could be a, a wrong approach, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think anybody's saying we're rooting for that. I think what we're no, saying... No, I'm not is, saying that we are. I'm just yeah, giving my perspective. Just yeah. to be clear, I think, I think what's interesting here is you have a technology that is then tied to this incentive of cryptocurrency. And so the reality is it is a very great area... And depending on how, <clears throat> and I learned this working with Jeremy when we were launching PCA, depending on how you launch and communicate something, you could very quickly and easily turn it into a security if you say that this person or these people who invested in this thing are going to get a profit from it. And that's where you have to be very careful. And that's why cryptocurrency is in this gray area of, you know, is it a blockchain technology that and then falls in the commodity side of it? But then if you're going to say people can profit from it, okay, now it's going to fall into it. It's a very, very gray area. And that's why we need Congress to put some damn laws in place to say, define it. That's their freaking job. That's what they're there for. Build the laws, put it out there, put the clarity so everybody can move forward. And that's so, guys, don't worry about the court case that you should be calling your congressman and saying, hey, get a goddamn law put out there. Do what you're paid to do and get this done. So then all this ambiguity, uh, ambiguity. Ambiguity goes away. Ambiguity. Thank you. I got you, Johnny Crypto. I want to give a shout out to the Bearable Bull because he is out there and listening. We love you too, my friend, and we appreciate all your hard work. But there are two comments in the live chat that definitely stick out to me. Number one is from our listener, Mr. Wright, that says the CFTC has said very few cryptos are securities. Of course, the, the CFTC is saying that. And of course, the security 
Exactly. They're financially incentivized to do that. But another question I want to address is which cryptos besides XRP are likely not to be securities? Nobody is addressing that issue. So one of the things I can do to identify whether a token is a security or not is does it have utility outside of price appreciation, right? Am I able to use my XRP or any currency for that example for a real world utility that's going to produce some form of income? Selman, why don't you close this out here? Tell us a couple of currencies that you believe are not securities. First of all, I totally agree with Johnny uh, about, you know, like how you communicate first is so essential. I can tell you this, so many NFT projects out there, literally the communication is so bad and it immediately can put you into that, uh, like that basket. And um, so currently I only see couple cryptocurrencies uh, with its completely decentralized, um, you know, background that can um, actually become um you know let's say not a big victim of the sec which is for example i believe that um projects like chain link project like um i would even say um like bnb could be risky bnb could be risky yeah uh but it, it's you know actually we need to dive more v chain for example in my opinion shouldn't be a security it really it really is a product literally if you buy an nft if you buy a token uh, feel like you're buying a product of a company and not like hey i'm buying this asset this is going to appreciate in value no this is going to appreciate because the 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 um, basically the technology the software is used by a lot of people and it's solving issues right and uh th that's why because we have a limited amount blah 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 all of that stuff is important, but unfortunately, so many also did a pre-IPO, this and that. It's it's super risky. So even if you invest in NFTs, please watch out. Please be careful uh, because um, just like Johnny said, because there is no real regulation now, we don't know how to play the game here. It's always risky. So once they define it, we can then say, okay, um, we should stay in the U.S. or no, we're moving out. So before that, it's just, you know, Texas, it's just like Wild West here. So let's just move out and um, design something um, in another country. That's, you know, that's messed up, but um, that's how it is. Amazing. And speaking of tokens that are not securities, we have an XRP update for all of our listeners out there, but we got 261 of us out there. Show us some love, smash that like button, drop, kick it, give it an elbow. We're going to continue bringing you the most relevant and impactful crypto related topics every single day of the week. But we're going to dive into this next article, which is an XRP related article as Ripple CEO discusses the potential outcomes of the SEC lawsuit over XRP. So Ripple CEO discussed the impl implications of the SEC winning their lawsuit against Ripple. During an interview, Brad Garlinghouse was asked what would happen if he does not get a favorable ruling and XRP is deemed a security. The Ripple executive quickly emphasized that in a situation like that, XRP would only be, be considered a security inside the United States. The SEC only has jurisdiction in the United States and in, many, and in some ways, how the world is operating right now is already as if the case has been lost. He added that investors cannot trade XRP in the United States on most crypto trading platforms. And if Ripple loses the case, how does that change anything? It's basically status quo and Ripple is going to continue to grow very, very quickly. We do have more interesting quotes at the bottom of this article, but I want to kick it around the group first and get some comments. We'll start off with the node defender this morning. Mario, we're getting some interesting confidence from Brad Garlinghouse here, and he seems to be more confident than ever. What does this indicate to you about what may be going on behind the scenes in this lawsuit? And how do you feel overall about this project XRP? I feel confident. I think Brad has shown nothing but confidence ever since the beginning of this lawsuit. Um, I have not seen a single video where he uh, he gave me a hint of um, feeling like he wasn't going to take this as a win. He always speaks as is as if there's no other option but a win against the SEC. They will Ripple will come out winners. We saw we covered a couple weeks ago that they're they're going to be spending a hundred million dollars in this litigation. So they they wouldn't be doing this unless they were sure that they could win. And again, it goes back to the conversation that we were having before. For as long as the SEC continues to, to, to acknowledge and say that Ethereum is not a security, well, then XRP has a big shit chance at winning or Ripple has a big chance of winning this case just based on that statement alone. So what gets me excited about this article, Selman, is the fact that even if Ripple loses, a resolution a resolution is going to mean that at least we can move on, continue progressing and growing outside of the United States. What does this article indicate to you? And what do you think the result of the lawsuit is going to be? Because for me personally, I'm very bullish. 
I'm super bullish. Like, first of all, Brad Gowlinghouse is a, re a real leader. I love him so much. Like, literally, how he handles the situation, that's great. And then on the other side, even if Ripple loses the case, which I doubt, they spend hundred millions, over hundred million dollars. With like he, like the CEO basically said it, right? Hundred million dollars, which is insane. But um, if they weren't that uh, confident, they wouldn't spend that much probably. But um, that actually gives me um, a lot of hope that we're gonna win this case. But if not, worst case scenario, we will basically Ripple would pay a fine and then move out. If if after that they can you know come together and really sit down and define the uh, the rules, they will just move out. You know, Japan last year in January or February announced that you know uh, we welcome you guys, Ripple. You can come to us. Many countries offered a place um, for Ripple, and so for me, I believe you know even like we're in a bear market right now, and uh, it's all good. Um, even if we lose this case, worst case scenario. In the next bull run with clear regulations, if XRP like Ripple moves out, um, we're gonna see a great, great rally for Ripple again. But for now, I truly believe we're gonna win this case. It looks like they have nothing to really bring up anymore, the SEC. So uh, it's just a matter of time. But again, if that happens, guys, buy the rumors, sell the news. Don't expect a crazy rally immediately. You know it. All is connected, the whole markets. So if 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 you see a great run, take the profits, and then as we you know continue the bear market, buy back in. But no financial advice, of course, you decide. But that's a game plan that I'm actually planning. I'm waiting for the lawsuit to end, and um, yeah, I would make that couple moves. Johnny Crypto, I'm kicking it to you next because we got a great comment from Mr. Wright. It's interesting the world is ignoring the U.S. and the SEC's rules for cryptocurrency, and that the BRICS coalition keeps growing. We're in the middle of a new world order taking over. It sounds a little bit dramatic, but I couldn't agree with you more, Mr. Wright. You're spot on. You continue to be right about what's going on today. The U.S. is being ignored when it comes to the rules and guidelines that they're creating for regulation and for good reason. I think many of our politicians have their pockets lined with inauthentic opinions. But Johnny Crypto, I want to kick it to you. What's on your mind? Well, first of all, Mr. Wright is right. Um, there is a whole shift happening uh, from the sh from the dollar being the current reserve world currency to a basket of currency that's going to happen. That's happening right in front of our faces, and nobody, nobody is talking about it. Go talk to your friends and ask them if they even know what the world reserve currency is. And maybe of the 3% who will know, ask them if they realize it's being switched. And then of those 1%, ask them if they know what it actually means, what their life is going to happen, what's going to happen to our lives, our quality of lives here in the U.S. They have no freaking clue what's coming. Mr. Wright, you got your shit together. That's because you're a part of the Academy or you, you listen to the show every day. So good for you. Kudos to you. Pat yourself on the back. Don't break your arm while you do it. But getting back to the conversation you guys just having about XRP, here's the thing. So I kind of, not that I disagree with you guys, but I don't think Ripple's going to win this case because there's no way in the world, this is my opinion, so you guys don't have to agree. Um, that's what's great about this show, right? I think what's going to happen, there's no way in the world the SEC can afford to let this case uh, be lost in court because it because the way this works in court is when a, when a court decision is made, unfortunately, it becomes what's called precedent, which then means it's law. So then all the other court cases then to, can tend to follow that ruling, which means in this case, the SEC loses its power to go after companies. Do you guys really think the SEC is going to let something that they know they're going to lose go to court. They're going to let Ripple win. No freaking way. What they're going to do is they'll tie this thing up for the next four years, delay, 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 to the point where Ripple's going to be like, okay, we're going to have to settle. So what I think is really going to happen is I think you're going to see a settlement somewhere down the road when the SEC has decided that they've delayed long enough or when the elites or the big boys have told them it's time to end this thing. And it'll probably, it'll probably coincide with some event somewhere, and I don't know what that event is going to be. But I think personally that's what's going to happen. So that's my two cents. That's how I'd wrap this up, Abs. Selman, I'd love to just get some really quick closing statements from you. We have a, we have a statement from the legal counsel at Ripple saying it looks like a resolution will come in 2023. And each day that passes is hurting U.S. citizens who are essentially victims of a rug pull by the SEC. $15 billion of XRP's market cap was destroyed the day that this lawsuit was filed. 
and it's hurting the very people that the SEC is claiming that they protect. Why don't you bring us home here, Selman? Absolutely, absolutely. Literally, imagine um, when when someone tells you, hey, buy this coin, it's going to appreciate, et cetera, then it's called a security. But when someone uh, purposely is doing the opposite and saying, hey, buy this coin and I'm going to rock pull you, take your money, then it's it's all okay. Why? Because it's the SEC. So that's, you know, a messed up situation. So many U.S. citizens, unfortunately, everybody was hoping for a nice bull run. People wanted to, you know, make some some money, especially now during a recession would have been really helpful. And they re- re- literally played with our hopes. And this is why I believe, you know, um, things will change. But yeah, 2023 for regulation. Absolutely. I'm waiting for that. And Johnny, um, I really... That that's actually a smart point um, because you know you see Ripple already paid over hundred million and they can't pay that much anymore. Exactly. And imagine the SEC is funded exactly. by the government, so they can literally exactly. uh, delay it for twenty years if they wanted, right? Correct. Uh, and and supply money. Absolutely. And if they lose this case, actually, what people outside of Ripple XRP um, don't understand is. We're actually we're not fighting for Ripple here, guys. We're actually fighting for the future of cryptocurrencies. But so many Ethereum maxis, Bitcoin maxis don't understand this or other altcoin holders don't understand this. We're here fighting against the government. And this is going to come, guys. Like, I really believe Ripple is going to come out better. And uh, we're, we're the defenders of, of the whole cryptocurrency market. So people don't understand it. So that is why... Um, we're going to lean back and watch the show, but eventually, of course, we're all going to make it. Guys, I do have an article prepared for our listeners out there, but Johnny Crypto, they're testing the fire alarms in my building. So I'm going to ask you to just take the floor here for about a minute. And then I got a video prepared for our listeners talking about how Vitalik Buterin is bragging that Ethereum sold the top of this market. So please take over, Johnny Crypto, and I'll give you the thumbs up when I'm back live. So while Abs goes to uh, check the batteries on a smoke alarm, we'll talk here about, uh, as we talk about, the uh <laughs> the crypto markets um so obviously in 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 chatting here we've got some folks in here in the room saying that they actually believe ripple will win they oh so there's the butyric okay good so uh, we got vitalik buterin saying here the merge is not priced in not only is the market in term not only in market terms but also psychologically in narrative terms now that's an interesting comment that he says there because frankly there are a lot of people especially i wish gonzo was here today he's been tracking this merge very, very tightly. And he would tell you that they are definitely, I think there is definitely some of this news uh, price then because we saw a big run, right? We saw, what was it? Maybe a few months ago, Ethereum was sitting around a thousand bucks, actually as low as 900. And now it's almost at 17. There's no question in my, my mind that what's driving some of that is this merger news. There's no doubt that there's some of that baked in here. So we'll see what it is. But I like to kick it around the room and see what you guys think. Do you guys think this merger news, we'll start with you, Selman. Do you think the merger news is baked into the Ethereum price? Or do you think, it, as he's saying, not only is it not baked in, but even mentally, nobody's even thinking about it? Selman, if I could just jump in here. The fire alarms have gone off, and I am back on the live stream. So I do want to get your comments. But first, we're going to show our listeners a video of Vitalik Buterin bragging about how the Ethereum Foundation sold the top of this bull market. We're going to get some comments from the group afterwards. Here we go. Theory, right, uh, fairly quickly. And you didn't short it, did you? So the I, mean, I did can get um, uh, get the Ethereum Foundation to sell about uh, seventy thousand ETH, like basically at the top, and that's doubled our runway now. So, well, that statement pretty much speaks for itself. The Ethereum Foundation sold seventy thousand Ethereum at the top of the market. That is either a coincidence or this man knows something we don't, but we're going to kick it around the group. Let's start off with Selman G. Selman, what does this video say to you and how do you feel about the fact that Ethereum, well, it's not considered a security by Gary Gensler. It's looking more and more like that. It's just scary, man. I mean, these are billionaires, right? And of course, they're not sitting there with like their neighbors uh, or like with their old school friends. Of course, they're hanging out with like other billionaires and other people that are really have close ties to uh, to like the government or basically the Fed and, and other businesses. So they know like, and, and of course, you know, another thing is these guys, um, where are bankers involved. We have people that like maybe big fund manager or ex fund managers involved. All these people know how markets drive and they knew when to get out. 
because we had extreme greed last year and they knew uh, they're they're not greedy because they already make billions. And imagine like uh, at selling at the top. Wow, this is this is crazy. And you see, obviously, guys, um, the merch is not priced. That's what he says. And imagine like they sold seventy thousand at the top. They didn't tell us, and now they do. But imagine um, Johnny also coming to your question. Um, the uh, the way this whole thing works is, you get this news update. Uh, like this rumor that um, the Ethereum merch will happen mid-September. And then slowly you'll see how that price, that news is getting priced. So we could really see if the market is still, you know, going to be bullish and Bitcoin currently trading at 2,300, yeah, 23,700. <laughs> Guys, imagine that could continue. We're going to see that um, news getting priced. We're going to see more, more pumps. But when that news update comes out, I wouldn't hold Ethereum then. I would take my profits because it's always buy the rumors, sell the news. And before the news update really drops, I would get out a little earlier just in case. But yeah, like if the market continues to be bullish, if this is not a bull trap, then hell yeah, I believe August could be great for Ethereum, but it's of short nature. Amazing. And we're giving a brief update of the Ethereum roadmap on the screen now. It says that the merge of proof stake will happen on September 19th and surging, which will bring a higher transaction numbers via sharding will happen in 2023. So there are some bullish things on the horizon for Ethereum. And as we know, they've been given a free pass. We got just a couple of minutes here, Johnny. I'd love to hear some of your overall thoughts on Ethereum. Vitalik is also saying that the merge has not been priced in, not only in terms of the market, but also in terms of psychological and the narrative. So how are you feeling about Ethereum? And do you think we're going to have a very bullish couple of months here? Because that's what Vitalik's saying. Well, I do believe that Ethereum, if they make this switch over, and I think they will because they have to or they'll be done, I think they're going to survive. I've been saying that for the longest time. This is I said the only killer that's going to kill Ethereum is Ethereum. There, That's it. Right. And, and, and I loved, I think, Susie or somebody's comment. Yeah. Would you let Vitalik babysit your children? <laughs> Absolutely not. He looks like he looks like Jeremy said he would, but I wouldn't. He looks like a, a psycho killer. But um, but anyway, um, I do believe abs and I am. I'm not going to sit here and lie to this. I, I am bullish on Ethereum because they already have what's called the first mover advantage in there. And as this grows, they're going to shift and they're going to they're already shifting to the merge in 2.0. They're going to get the speed up. They're going to do sharding, which is going to get the gas costs down, gas fees down. They're going to do all the things to stay alive, and they're going to coexist, I think, with Cardano and a few other blockchains. So, frankly, whether the price is baked in or not, it doesn't matter because I think where we're looking at today at $1,700 price point, I don't think it's going away. I think it's going to own a, a good chunk of this market, and I think someday that you're going to see Ethereum sitting at five or $10,000. So whether you get a $1,700 or $900, it ain't going to freaking matter when it's sitting at $10,000 or $5,000. And I think that, I mean, remember, there's only 300 million people in this space today. There's only, and, and we're projected to have a billion by 2030. So there's a lot of people and a lot of money sitting on the side that's going to flood in. And it's going to flood into technologies that are proven because, because um, institutions, while they'll take some risk, they're going to put a lot of money into the lower risk stuff. And Ethereum is going to be seen as low risk if they get to 2.0. Amazing. And I want to give our listeners one last live update this morning. We did a Polygon analysis from Mr. Selman G. Polygon also reports notable partnerships with an impressive number of major Web 2 and Web 3 products. Announcing building on Polygon are projects such as Meta, Flipkart, the NFL, eBay, and many more. There's so much bullish news happening here in the price chart. It looks fantastic. I just wanted to update our listeners very briefly on that. Mario, do you have any closing statements for this episode? And how do you feel about Polygon? They actually just created a scaling solution for Ethereum. So I'm very bullish. Yeah, Polygon is just a, uh, amongst many others that people people should be taking advantage of as far as price action is concerned. Take advantage, invest in those. Um, whether Ethereum is going to be a winner or not, whether Ethereum is a, a Yahoo or whether it's a Google, time will tell. But um we're, it, it's good to be in the space. It's good to be aware of what's happening. It's good to take advantage of these opportunities. And uh, all we can do is just keep an eye. And, and if Ethereum is not the winner, well, then we'll take profits uh, if you're invested in Ethereum. So 
Thank you so much, Mario. And we're going to close this thing out the same way we always do by saying thank you to each one of our special guests. Thank you to the No Defender. Thank you to Selma G. And thank you to Johnny Crypto. We got 241 live listeners out there. Show us some love. Smash that like button. Tomorrow, it's going to be a little bit of a unique episode. We're going to be live from Johnny Crypto's Lake House. So I look forward to that. As we always say, Warriors, rise. Get your shit together, baby. Thanks for joining us. Let's go. Give it the warrior elbows.